Good morning, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Um, today, for our May Week devotion, we will be reading Psalms 23, The Good Shepherd. Um, but before then, I'd just like to say again, happy Wednesday. Um, there aren't many church announcements today. We do have um, sermon group later. And then, of course, you know, um, on our activities, please be on the lookout for communications regarding um, next month and just how the flow of our worship service and some added things are going to go um yeah that's pretty much all we have right now um if you would join me please with the word of prayer heavenly father we just come to you now lord thanking you for being you and thanking you for being an awesome god and awesome ruler god we ask that you be with us individually and collective as a whole as one body in christ god we pray that you will be with our mind, our body, and our soul, God. May we strengthen our mind daily, God, to focus on you and to filter everything we do through you, God. May you um, help us realize that our body is a temple, God, and that we should be honoring you with our bodies, whether that's health, whether that's fitness, and things that we wear, whatever the case may be, God. Um, and our soul, God, may we be always longing and desiring for a closer walk with you to have a deeper communion with you god and may um in our walk with you as we strengthen our walk with you god we will strengthen our relationship with our brothers and sisters god may we um smile when they smile you know join in their um their hopes their dreams god and when they're in their dark seasons god may we may we lament with them as well god um we just thank you god for the sacrifice of jesus and him dying on the cross and being raised from the dead god we know that nothing we could have ever done um could have made you love us that much god and we thank you for that we just pray that whatever you have for the people today god give it to it let them digest it and may it be for the nourishment of their physical and spiritual bodies god we thank you we are so we're not worthy of you, God, but we appreciate you and we love you so much. In Jesus' name is we pray, um, who taught us how to pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. So we, so we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So as I previously stated, we will be reading Psalms 23 today. And it's the Good Shepherd, a Psalm of David. <clears throat> and it reads, The Lord is my shepherd. I have what I need. He lets me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside quiet, still waters. He renews my life. He leads me along the right paths for his name's sake. Even when I go through the darkest valley, I fear no evil. For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows only goodness and faithful love will pursue me all the days of my life and i will dwell in the house of the lord as long as i live <clears throat> excuse me as long as i live i just read psalms 23 of the um sorry y'all of the christian standard bible version um so yes this is the good shepherd everybody i'm sure is familiar with this passage right um it's one of the first passages that i knew like in its entirety when i was a kid we even, um, there's a song that goes with this. We even had a, a spiritual dance to this song. But um, yeah, the Good Shepherd. So I think two things first stick out in my opinion. One, obviously we know the Good Shepherd, but in order for him to be this Good Shepherd, he has to have sheep, right? So we have to know who we are. We have to know our identity. If you are a believer of God, believe in or in Jesus Christ being our Lord and Savior, then you have to be a sheep. What does that mean? Um, a shepherd is not only just someone, you know, who looks after the flock, but um, protects God's. That means the shepherd is going to make sure the sheep have what they need. But then also if the shepherd says, okay, herd, we're moving this direction, right? The sheep have to follow the direction of the shepherd. So we have to first recognize our identity in Christ and who we are. We are his sheep. <clears throat> Meaning, because a lot of us see Jesus as a savior, but we have to recognize him as Lord as well. That means he's sovereign over our lives, what we do day in, day out. And um, throughout this whole passage, one thing is very clear. The Lord is there always, right? Through the good times, through the bad, through the ugly, through the in-between, God is there. 
He's omnipresent, right? We don't just say that and take it with a grain of salt. We say it because it's relevant, because it's real. Whatever we're going through, whether it be uh, the greenest of pastures over in the darkest valley, God is there. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. So that means he is the ultimate provider. A lot of times we think, oh, God isn't doing this and that. Maybe you don't need that at this time, right? God is going to always make sure you have what you need. Key word is need. Granted, yes, sometimes he blesses us to get those wants, but maybe it's not always needed, right? Whether that be, and I think a lot of times we think about that as in materialistic things. Sometimes that includes people. That includes um, places, things. There, there are all sorts of different types of avenues. When we think of blessings, we a lot of times only think of them as materialistic, but God blesses us and gives us what we need in different capacities, whether it's um, peace and a sound mind, whether it's community, whether it's a certain group of people, whether it's, you know, whether it be a finance or it be a home, whatever the case, whatever you need in that moment, God gives, God provides. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and I want to go to this next verse, verse three, he renews my life. And he leads me along the right path. As long as you stay in the will, stay in the protection of God, you will be fine. Um, and in that prayer, if you listen earlier, I said for God to um, help us with our mind, body, and spirit. Our mind, um, I can't think of scripture right now, but it um, says we would be transfer, transformed excuse me, by the renewing of our minds, right? God renews our life. If we stay in the will... If we stay under God, and that means we're hungry for God as well. So that means we're doing our part. Not only because a lot of times we expect God to do completely 100. When God has given us the capacity and the power to do something. So if I am staying prayed up, if I'm staying in my Bible, and not just reading it to read it, but reading it to understand and to hear the voice of God, then my mind will not only be stronger, but it will be strengthened. So that when these things come my way, um, when these tactics of the enemy come my way, I will know what to do because I not only can hear God telling me the right thing to do, but also I've known and I can recall it back because I've spent this time with him. I've dwelled with him. Um, he leads me along the right path. And, so, and he leads us on the right path and it's us that goes astray. God, like I said, the scripture, what it clearly is saying the entire time, God is with us always, whether it's the green pastures, the quiet waters, um, the right paths, whether we're in the darkest valley, whether we're in the in the faces of our enemies, whatever the case is, God is always there, right? He is the one leading us on, on the right path. And when we go astray, that's when we venture off. That's when we think we can do our own thing. That's when we say, oh, that looks good. I'm going to go that way. It was never God. A lot of times we like to use the thing like, oh, the enemy made me do this, the enemy made me do that. He only presented it to you. You made the choice, you made the decision to um, to do that sin or to have those thoughts, whatever it was, right? The devil just makes it appealing. We choose to act on that. Um, <clears throat> even though I go through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and staff, they come for me. Um, I just wanted to pinpoint this one, especially because God did not give us the spirit of fear, right? So if I know that the person, or excuse me, not the person, because God isn't a person, but if I know that the God, the God, the one true living God, if I know that that God is with me and God created um, not fear, but peace, sound mind, confidence. If I know that that God is with me, not only is he with me, he's beside me and a part of him lives within me, I don't have to fear. I don't have to worry about what comes my way because I know that what's for me will be for me. What's not, God will either block it or protect me in a way. Sometimes even if it hurts, he will um, put me in a situation or a way that I can move away from the things that are not for me. So even though if I'm in this dark valley and I feel horrible and I feel bad, I know that in the end I'm going to be okay because I have no danger. I have no fear because the one true living God is with me. Even though the disciples were on the ship and it was going astray and it was tossing and turning, they technically didn't have a reason to fear because you have Jesus on the boat with you. What are you fearing for? Um... Yeah, I know you are with me for your rod and your staff, they come for me. And then that rod and that staff, that's just an analogy, you know, of a shepherd. If you know, generally, a shepherd, um, excuse me, a shepherd and some type of staff just to keep order um, with the sheep and help guide them along. 
you repair a table in the pre in before me in the presence of my enemies. A lot of people like this because they're like, oh, you know, my enemies, these people who are hating on me, my haters, yada, yada. It's okay because God's going to prepare this table in front of them. Um, And I think this verse alone can be very dangerous because we look at it very selfishly. Like, we almost look at it waiting for the day that we can stunt on our haters or whatever the case may be. When that's not what it's about. It's just really showing you that even though there are people who are praying on your downfall, even though there are people who are being used um, for bad things or even for the enemy, whatever the case may be, those stumbling blocks, those people, those trials and tribulations, they will not... Um, in the long run, they in the long run they do not win, right? Like in the long run, regardless, God always prevails. God's word always prevails. That's why it has literally stood the test of times, right? We I don't know if you guys have, but I've heard these stories before where like homes and all this kind of stuff catch uh, catches on fire, and the one thing that literally withstands the fire is the Bible. <laughs> like the one thing that literally withstands house fires and everything. A lot of times is the Bible. Why? Because no man can go against this Bible. No man can go against the word of God. Um, but yeah, he prepares, he prepares the table for me in the presence of my enemies. So like I said, it's just showing that life is going to come. Life is going to come and hit you hard. But those punches, they may, you may get knocked up. You may get knocked back. You may have a bruise or two, but guess what? You're not going to be taken out. It is going to be okay because even though, um, even though you're being hit, you won't. Like I said, you may stumble, you may slip, but you will not fall. And even if you do fall, God will help you get back up and continue pursue, go on, so forth. Um, he anointed my head with oil. My cup overflows. Um, this goes back to what I was saying earlier about blessing. My cup overflows. If we really really right not just like oh i love the lord i'm going to church this sunday not playing around with god right if we really really love god use ourselves and our lives as a vessel use our lives as real disciples real discipleship um really not only pursuing god the word of god but also telling the world about this savior about this one true living god about the things that he's done for you, about your testimony, about all these things, your cup will overflow. And it's not, let me pinpoint this also. It's not so much what we do, right? We cannot do, it's not a list of things to do, and then God will bless you. Because honestly, we don't deserve even one blessing, right? Because we were born into sin. We are thoughtful. We are deceitful we are all these things but by the grace of god we have access to eternal life by the grace of god he still loves us by the grace of god he still continues to bless us but these blessings um in different capacities it's more than you can ask for more than you can think more than you can imagine according to his will his power and his word um only goodness and faithful love will pursue me the goodness and faithful love, what is that? The goodness and faithful love of the God of the God we serve. The goodness and faithful love of Jesus. The goodness and faithful love of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. The goodness and faithful love. Like, just repeat that. The goodness and faithful love. The goodness and faithful love. Like, that, that's really a beautiful thing when you think about it. The goodness and faithful love. Because like I just said, like, there's this song, um, it basically says, like, I can't do enough. No trophy that I do, no. And, like, I think when we really stop and think about that, like, we can stand in awe and reverence of God because there's nothing, there's literally nothing that you can do to deserve the love that he gives us. Like, I don't think we really, we really can't understand agape love, true agape love, because we don't have the capacity to give it right now, right? Because we are still human. But he literally gives us agape love, unconditional love, beyond fault, beyond measure. Like when we come to him in real um, repentance, he forgives our sins and forgets them. Granted, that doesn't mean we don't receive the consequence. 
but he he's not worried about the sin from yesterday if you've truly repented and are aspiring to change that behavior or that way of thinking like the goodness and faithful love of the father is gorgeous it's beautiful it's amazing um and i will dwell in the house of the lord as long as i live so basically the ending right there i will dwell in the house of the lord as long as i live is almost like i don't deserve this love i can't repay you for this love but the least i can do is to if I know that you are the God that's omnipresent, that is everywhere, the least I can do is acknowledge that you are here and make an out loud confession and commitment to be in your presence, to dwell in the house of the Lord for all the days of my life. Not just the building of the house of the Lord, not just the structure of the house of the Lord, but wherever I am, you are as well. So I am always in mist, in the midst of the Father. I'm always in midst of your power. And because of that, I will I will be here. I will dwell. Like, I won't just, oh, God's here, yay. Like, I'm, I'm having, I'm going down the road. God, I know you're here, da 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 Or I'm talking to you, like, God, what do you think about this? Or, you know, just little things. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Like, that's the least we can do. Is just spend time with them all the time, wherever. The whispers of your heart make it a prayer. The, the little daily actions make it a worship. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Because you have given me goodness and faithful love. And as a response, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. So may we all go with God, grow I love you all. I don't know if the video just stopped. It said it was trying to connect. I'm not sure, but I love you guys. I hope you have an amazing, amazing Wednesday. Be blessed, and I'll see you another time.